Hey, welcome back. So today we're gonna go through how I made Willy. Um, I did another one, not so in depth on just the straight 45, 22.5-ish degree lines that are going through here. Um, I got a lot of questions on that video, so I'm hoping this video will build upon that last one um, and answer all the other ones that were in the comments that maybe people read, maybe they didn't. Um, I didn't mean to leave you all confused on how I did that, but I'm also going to get into the software as well um, because that was a lot of the questions. But again, all my photo carves are with a 60 degree V-bit. Now, people always seem to ask what brand um, do you use and all that. I've always found that it doesn't matter, at least in the probably, I don't know, I'd probably say I've made 80 to 100 of these. Um, I just buy the cheap stuff. I, You know, right now I think the 60 degree in there is about 20 bucks. So, uh, take that for what you will. I've had a Mana, I've had Whiteside, I've had all those. Uh, for whatever reason, I always seem to drop those and break them so they don't last long. Um, these cheap ones seem to hang on for dear life. And they are around with me through, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 carves. Not just photo carves, but other you know signs and stuff that I do as well. Um, I haven't really ran one until like it starts catching a fire because it's so dull. But if I get you know 50 carves out of a $20 piece... I'm good with, what is that, 40 cents, 45 cents a carve. Um, that works for me. I don't think pushing it any further and endangering the shops really worth it. Uh, so, take that for what you will. You can go buy the expensive ones. I'm not saying they work or don't work. They work great. But once you tune in the cheap ones, get the speeds right, you can't tell a difference in my, in my experience. Um, but it does take probably one or two carves or at least really watching one big carve to kind of get those feeds and speeds. So with that, um, this is the finished Willie. He's probably, what is this, 18 by 20, I think it is. So he is, this is probably one of the more popular sizes, um, 20 by 20, 18 by 20, stuff in there, um, 24 by 24 are a lot of what I sell. If you're curious of how I sell them or how I price them um, and the materials and costs and all that that I include in it and kind of the margins and everything, leave a comment below and I can go over that as well in a new video. But this video is specifically for how I made Willy. I'll go into the software. Um, I'll talk about that and then I'll show you the process as well to get to this. Um, so again, any other comments, questions that I don't cover in this one or that you had from the last one, feel free to put them down below. Hopefully I do answer every single one of them. I know there's probably something I'm gonna forget or miss. So just put it down below and I'll, I answer all the questions so you'll get a response um, decently quick. But with that, let's get going. Okay, so in vCarve or your Vetrix software, if you have Aspire or anything else, <clears throat> there's like three or four different versions. This may look the same. It may look a little different, um, but you should be able to figure it out because nothing's that much different in any of the versions. So get your picture that you want to carve. This is the Willy project right here. Um, so I have the picture that I wanted to put on my wall load it up. I have the size I want it in. Um, that's all I have selected or that's all I've done so far. So in your tool paths, this little icon right here, let's see there, um, photo V carve. That's what you want. So when you click on that, it's going to bring this up. I'm going to open this since this is what I already have created, but here's all my settings. Nothing nothing um too tough here so max carving depth you're going to want to change that from what i've seen just cutting my own plus the community in general 
Um, they all agree about 0 0.05, 0 0.06 is where you want to be on the max depth. Step over retract can be really whatever you want. Um, just read the settings on that and make sure it fits for your stuff. For me, 0.12 works great. So select your 60 degree V bit um, if you have it or whatever one you're trying, but that's where you would select it. So let me get in here. Um, these are my settings for my machine. So I have an Avid 5v5 or 5x5, I should say, um, machine. I'll post the specs probably over here just so you can see what CNC I have and you can compare it to yours. Um, these settings may work for you. They may not. You may need to speed up uh, the feed rate or you may need to slow it down. Just kind of depends. But for this cheap bit and these speeds here, this is what I found works best um, all together. So the only other thing you need to do, dense and sparse, so just kind of how close or how far away from the lines you are. I have a raster set. I've kind of messed with hatch. I've just never liked how it looked. So I've always just stick or stuck with raster. Dense, I normally go between a hundred and about 120. Um, just depends on the photo. So each photo is a little different. This one, Willie, happened to be 100 and worked out just fine. In the, I don't know how many, 75 or so that I've made, 70, 80 pictures, 100 to 120 is all I've ever had to move it. And I found something in there that has worked just fine for me. Line angles, again, depends on the picture. It will change how things are seen on the screen when you do carve it out. Um, for Willie, I'm at 22 and a half. You can do 45. You can also do like negative 22 and a half or negative 45 and have the lines go basically backwards from what you've seen on mine. So they'd be starting in the right and going left instead of left going right. It just depends on personal preference on that one. I haven't seen anything where the actual lines going left or right or right to left actually matter. Maybe there's a picture out there that it does. You can always just mess with it um, and see what you get. But when you're done with that, all you have to do is hit calculate. So I'll do a couple examples real quick. So calculate Willie at 22 and a half. Preview selected toolpath and that's what we get. Does that look? Kind of what we got on uh, the V-Carve, or not the V-Carve, the CNC. We'll find out. But if you wanted to, let's say this doesn't look as good as you think. Um, close that out. Go back to this and say you wanted 45 because the previous one didn't look so good. So reset your preview. And preview selected. So, did you see the difference? Can you see the difference? Maybe. Um, we'll just have to see. But you see how his beard's kind of washed out. So when I sand him later on in his face right here, you got to be really careful not to sand too much. Otherwise, it'll get really white and you won't have any texture or anything. It just looks kind of off. The other thing... Global fill. So if you don't fill and you just use material color, he kind of looks washed out and bland and doesn't really give you a good idea. But if you're going to paint black, go to global fill and then just click black and everything that was cut will change to black. So that gives you a pretty good idea how this is going to pop once we actually do cut him out and then get to um, the actual painting and sanding. So for this one, this is pretty much it. This is all you have to do. Um, nothing too tough, nothing anybody can't do, only a couple settings to change. The biggest thing is just get a V-bit, cut a couple test samples, and just figure out your speeds. Because this one, I think, takes about, takes my machine at those settings a little over an hour to do. 
on a, let's see what my actual, whoops, wrong one, my settings. So he's right at 20 by 24, basically. And so that took about an hour, a little over an hour with those settings. So that's something you might want to play with if you're trying to get these down um, even faster. All right, so we have let this dry overnight. Um, got a brand new 120 grit pad. Gonna go ahead and sand. Now, Willie's looking a little brighter because uh, the garage door over there is open. So you see him better than you normally would. Uh, let me see if I can get what I'm looking at. So right now, that's kind of what it should look like, nice and dark. Um, you can see, but you still need to lighten it up some. So, let's get this back over here. Where was it? About right there. Okay, so now I'm just going to sand. And with this, you just sand until you like what you see in the picture, okay? So, some people may like it darker, some people may like it lighter. Now, the thing you need to worry about or pay attention to is this beard or any um, lighter parts of a photo that's not Willie Nelson or whoever. Um, for this one, the picture, his beard is super white. And then up here on his bandana was white as well. So, those are going to come out really quick because the grooves in there are almost non-existent. If there is some, like you can see this, it barely didn't even cut it. Um, his nose right here and a little bit of his forehead, same thing. Um, so you gotta be careful with those. Now something like down here, super dark, it's his jacket. So you can, you're gonna sand a little longer down here. Up here, you may see me only hit it for, I don't know, five, 10 seconds or something and back off and take a look. because. You can ruin it if you get this too much. And you'll see as you start going, it's really easy to start making things too blown out um, on the lighter side of stuff. As you can see, he brightened up a lot. It didn't take me long. I didn't fast forward or speed up the camera. Um, 
So it, it happens quick. So you don't want to sit there and hold the sander on it. You want to keep it moving back and forth or up and down however you're doing it. But keep going, otherwise you could make stuff really pop out and kind of ruin your photo. So I'm going to keep going just a little bit more, mainly right in here. Um, I want to get his face a little lighter. I may work on his jacket some too. Um, but overall, it's looking pretty good. I just need to get a little bit more of his face. Now one thing you may want, so you don't go through a ton of discs, um, is this cleaner. So these are cheap um, belt cleaning sticks is what they're called. Basically you just turn it on, turn your sander on and stick it to it because you can see right there that pad is pretty gunky um, at the moment even though we've let this dry. So I'm going to clean this off as much as I can and go back a little bit and we should be done. So for me, I like that. That's perfect. I think it's going to look well on a wall. Um, nothing popped out too much. It might have gotten just a little bit here and a little bit there with the sanding. But uh, nothing's going to be perfect when you're just sanding and trying to get a look. They're all going to be different. So I can live with you know a little bit of that and a little bit of this. So now... We're pretty much done, just a couple coats of shellac um, and then put the T-slot in the back to hang it on the wall if, they, if you want. Um, I haven't really, on MDF I don't really go and use the other stuff because I'm afraid those screws are going to wiggle loose. So I've always found something that's not too heavy and can stand it. Um, just a nail in that T-slot is the best way to go about it. All right, so now that we have Willie sanded, I've got my nice little T-track or T-slot jig. Um, this little backer here grabs a hold of the top, so when I put it on, it'll stick. Um, nothing fancy at all. I have a center line there, so when I mark it on there, I just match it to this, and then I at least know I'm in the center. Um, this opening here will probably give about a, eh, I think it's like a two two and a half inch uh, little slot and then let me get that going real quick get everything measured center line since everything else in my shops pretty jammed up with other projects I'm just gonna have to do it here on the table saw on top of the panel sled so what you want to make sure is though you you clamp this piece down or something so it doesn't move I have it against the table saw fence and then I'm gonna screw on this piece in the back that way there's no movement either way um, let me fix that there we go. So that, that way there's no movement either way, otherwise um, you're going to end up with a janky looking slot or it's going to be super long or up and down, which I've done before on accident. It's never fun because it kind of just ruins everything. So 
I have a little Yonico T-slot blade or bit that I normally put about 3 8 inch deep in there and then just go. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. I've probably done 30 or 40 of these and it's still chugging along. Not sure how much longer it's got. It seems to be wearing down a little bit but uh, it's still doing decent so I'm gonna get this see if I can work a hose to get it a little better and then we'll get going. As you can see there, it leaves a pretty good slot. Um, just a little bit of sand in to get the fuzzies off the edge of it, but other than that, you're ready to go. All right, since it is super windy, I normally do this out in the driveway, but it'll blow everywhere, so I'm gonna have to finish Willy right here in the garage. I just don't like the smell of things. Yes, I could wear a mask, but where's the fun in that? So, all I do is get my can of shellac, get going around the edges. Now, as you'll see, or hopefully can see, it'll start to yellow up just a little, which brings out the photo, I think, better and gives it a, a very distinct look instead of the white and black it's kind of like a old vintage type photo let's see I still need to get this so with as fast as shellac dries I normally do two quick coats like that and then just let him sit for a few minutes do the second coat and we'll be done. It's super simple, nothing, nothing crazy with this.